Hi guys, this is Anish. The agenda for this session is installation of Hadoop in distributed mode. That is deploying a real Hadoop cluster, a multi-node Hadoop cluster. Earlier we have seen how to deploy Hadoop on a single node cluster. That installation was a pseudo distributed mode installation. So in a single node cluster, we have all the demos running on a single machine. But as we have seen in the theory as well, the real power of Hadoop comes on a cluster where multiple machines parallelly working for a work. So our today's agenda is the same. We are deploying a Hadoop cluster on a multi node, multiple systems. So guys, this is our um, the manual that we are going to follow. We are going to see recommended platforms. What are the prerequisites? Then we'll do those prerequisites. Then we'll download Hadoop and install the Hadoop. We are, we'll, we are going to configure the Hadoop. Okay. So let's firstly talk about the recommended platform. Uh, so guys, recommended platform for uh, Hadoop is Linux. You can use uh, any flavor of Linux. Uh, Hadoop has been tested on a number of different flavors of Linux. Ubuntu, Red Hat, CentOS and so on. So I would say a Red Hat is the most popular flavor in the industry. So in the production, usually people go ahead with the Red Hat version. But uh, since uh, Ubuntu is freeware open source, so we are going ahead with the Ubuntu. Ubuntu is uh, again uh, pretty popular in, in the industry. So you can use 12.04 or later version of Ubuntu. Apart from that, uh, regarding Hadoop, we are using Cloudera distribution for Apache Hadoop. We are using Cloudera's flavor. That is CDH3 U6. But you can use Apache Hadoop as well. You can use other flavors as well. We are currently installing Hadoop 1.x. So the setups, the configuration that we are going to do today are applicable on any of the 20.x version or 1.x version. Now, so rather than understanding all prerequisites and the steps, theoretically, we'll understand and we'll uh, deploy the same things uh, directly during the practical during this workshop. Uh, so guys, to set up multi node cluster, usually in the industry, we have multiple physical servers. So but for your learning R&D, you can't purchase multiple physical servers. So what is the uh, another option? So another feasible option is you can create multiple virtual machines if you have good configuration laptop. So you can create multiple virtual machine and you can create a cluster. But uh, if you do not uh, want to use your cluster that much rigorously, so uh, what I would say another very, very easy option and it's very popular also that's cloud so we are going to use today cloud for our deployment so guys for today's deployment for our uh, cluster setup we are going to use amazon cloud that is amazon web services amazon is leader in cloud it is providing not only SaaS pass but it is also providing IaaS. So guys, in the Amazon, we are going to use, by the way, there are a number of different services in the Amazon Web Services, Compute and Networking, Storage and Content Delivery, Database, Deployment and Management, Analytics, and so on. There are lots of services, out of which we are going to use EC2, that is Elastic Compute Cloud. Let me click there. So guys, this is how EC2 dashboard looks like. We are having lots of options here, events, tags, instance, AMIs, volume, security groups, and so on. We are going to see whatever options are required for our case. Okay, let's understand few terminologies firstly. So guys, uh, here we have got instances. Instance means our server a uh, brand new server will be uh, provided to you when you launch an instance. So in the cloud terminology, it is called an instance. And we are going to use key pairs to authenticate ourselves that we are going to see later. Let, let's launch the instances. 
click on the launch instance here you will get a wizard there you can um, click next next and you can select uh, whatever is your uh, according to your requirement all your AMIs and machines step one choose an Amazon machine image AMI so guys AMI is a template that contains the software configuration that is operating system application server and applications required to launch your instance you'll be having complete template complete image available with you whatever type of uh, OS you want you can boot you can uh, use that OS so guys we have got several options like Amazon Linux Red Hat use Ubuntu okay we have got Ubuntu let's select Ubuntu from here Ubuntu server 14.04 LTS this is the latest version of Ubuntu that is available here click on select okay now guys step number two that is choose an instance type Amazon EC2 provides a wide selection of instance type that optimized to fit different use cases according to your requirement you can choose which ta what type of instance you want to use type means the configuration like uh, micro instances one CPU and one GB RAM small instances one CPU two GB RAM and so on so guys for our this case let's see use a medium instance let's use uh, m3 medium I have selected m3 medium with one core one CPU and 3.75 that's approximately 4 GB RAM okay let's click next yes now step 3 configure instance detail now configure the instance to suit your requirements number of instance so guys for our case we want to let's launch three instance where one instance will be our master rest two instances will be the slaves purchasing option network availability zone I am role all the things let it be as it is don't change any other settings for uh, this particular session guys I am just changing whatever is required to make it pretty much simple so that it would be very easy to understand we are just changing the configurations that are just mandatory that, like number of instance we want to select or the type of instance leave rest all the details as it is click next okay step 4 is add storage your instance will be launched with the following storage device settings so guys here it is giving you an option you can add more volumes add more storage say for example after launching the instance you want 1 TB 50 TB some sort of that type of space so you can add the instance right away from here that uh, space that volume will be available in your instance but for our case since uh, we are uh, deploying Hadoop for our learning we are going ahead with the default thing that is default size 8 GB okay go ahead click next step 5 tag instance a uh, tag instance tag consists of case sensitive key value pair so guys here we can specify we can tag our instance we can specify like what is the name of your instance so if you are having say hundreds of instances you can clearly identify that which instance you are using or for what purpose you are you have launched with instance let's leave this right now we'll tag our instance later click next okay so guys step number six is configure security group this is very important step a security group is a set of firewall rules that control the traffic for your instance so guys you can either create a new security group if you are first time user otherwise you can select your own existing group let me show you any existing group setting here like uh, here you okay let me firstly show you to create a new security group you can create a security group like SSH TCP protocol the protocol uh, this port range and from where you want to access you want to access just from your IP you want to access from custom IP just from this specific custom ID you can uh, access your instance but just since this is um, our uh, testing purpose let's make it anywhere add rule 
so guys usually we specify custom tcp rule that is a specific port like we specify like port 8080 make the ports 8080 open from a custom ip but uh, again i would say let's make it little open it would be very easy for us and uh, easy for understanding also we are opening all the ports all tcp and all udp but guys again i'm mentioning it that in the production you should not open all these ports so hd that is hadoop tr underscore let's make it zero one name that's it are all these steps are done now last step review and launch okay it is giving you the all you can review all your settings here your ami details instance type security groups instance details storage and text yeah all the things are fine i'm uh, we have cross verified each and everything okay now click on launch instance okay now guys when you launch an instance at that time it will ask you to select an existing key pair or a new key pair what is a key pair so guys it works uh, in the fund of public and private key like uh, there are multiple ways of authentication and authorization we know that first is password which is very uh, common but apart from password they are a very uh, good way very innovative way that is key pair that uh, you have public and private key so what amazon does it create public and private key and amazon stores the public key and it gives private key for us to store that we can download and we can use our private key so we either we can click create a new key pair it's very easy just give the name and download the key pair and otherwise you can choose an existing key pair so let me choose a key let me choose okay test underscore two i am having the key of that private key i am having for that now launch instance guys as soon as i click on launch instance it is going to launch three instance okay your instances are now launching it is launching our instance okay good now what to do let's go back to our ect ec2 console yes currently zero instances are running if you click here it will show us the details that our instances are yeah one instance is in running state rest two are the pending they are getting started so guys you can refresh the status here so guys now all the instances are running all the instances are running now running fine we can use all these instances for our use but uh, before using this instance let's firstly tag them so that it would be very easy for us to identify okay let's make the first one as a master second one as a slave one third one as a slave two okay okay now let's copy the details of our uh, instances that we want its public and private ip for what purpose you want public and private i'll show you let's first copy it let me open a notepad it is the public in ip of my master and this is the private ip of the master mm this public ip of slave one private ip of slave one i think it was not copied let me copy it once again yeah public ip of slave two okay now private ip of slave 2 so i have listed all the ips public and private of all the instances okay now guys to connect to these instances we need to use a ssh tool called putty let me show you that 
okay so this is the putty we need to use public IP to connect using putty so I am supplying public IP okay so guys whenever let, let me start let me show again whenever you supply this public IP like this you supply public IP here apart from that you need to supply your private key as well you need to click on SSH click on auth browse for your private key so guys you need to supply putty private key now uh, since Amazon provides you the key in the form of Amazon provides you key in the form of dot pm file you can convert that pm into ppk file using putty gen let's select this as soon as I click open it will open it uh, are you sure you're on the connection? Yes. Now, the default username is Ubuntu. Just click enter Ubuntu. It won't ask you for any password because we have already authenticated ourselves with public key, with private key. So, guys, this is a brand new machine where nothing is installed if you ls there is nothing is installed if you press java no java is not a program nothing is installed there and you start from scratch okay let's uh, open more putty sessions putty terminals to connect to more machines that is your slave one okay your ip then username ubuntu so this is the slave one okay so i'm arranging the windows like top one is my master left side is the slave one and right one will be the slave two Okay, let me create another putty session. Select the private key. Okay, open. Yes. Ubuntu is the login name. Let me arrange it at this location so that it will be very easy for identification. Okay, so guys, are all three machines are up and running now? We have got three brand new servers. You can check like uh, you can check their configuration also. Free minus. Um, their RAM or everything you can check it here yes so these are the brand new machines we can use for our own purpose whatever things we want to do here let's go back to our manual which we are following and then we'll uh, do all the settings one by one we'll do all the configuration one by one so guys the second point prerequisites the very first prerequisite is Java. Oracle Java is recommended for production. So guys, we are going to install Java and second is passwordless SSH setup. What is passwordless SSH? Passwordless SSH means from one machine to another machine. If you SSH that is remotely log in, it shouldn't ask you for any password. So Hadoop needs passwordless SSH from master to all these slaves. This is required for remote script invocation. I'll, I'll show you that as well. How exactly these things are required. Let's start. Let's start with the prerequisite. Install Java 7. The recommended is Oracle Java. Okay. So the 3.1 step update the source list. Okay. Let's run this command. sudo apt get update. Okay. So guys, sudo apt get update is going to update the source list. Source list means the location from where Ubuntu can download and install the software.
now sudo apt get install python software properties we are installing this properties let me run enter for so that uh, I'll, I'll show you why we are installing this yes install because we need to add this particular repository we need to add this particular repository from where java will come so that in my repository i'm adding the repository i'm adding the app repository to install the java press enter yes now again it's asking for sudo app get update to update the source list so guys whenever you get a new uh, hardcore new machine always you should run sudo app get update command to update your source list now why we run this command twice because we have added one more repository that's why we have added uh, we have run this command and this new repository we have added for java installation now for java installation we do not need to do anything just run this command if you run this particular specific command it will automatically install java let me show you enter yes capital y it is downloading the required setups required packages asking for the agreement oracle binary code okay do you agree the you accept the license yes as soon as we press yes now it is going to download more setups yeah it is downloading the setup at very fast speed at 64 mbps speed it has downloaded the jdk now it is installing java yes java is installed we can check the same java yes it is giving all the options we can check the version yes java version 1.7.0 underscore 65 java is installed with java hotspot means oracle java java is installed uh, our force prerequisite is done now next thing add entry of master and slaves in host file now guys we need to add your master ip and its alias entry in the host file why we are doing this let me firstly show you for this reason only i have copied it here master slave slave to okay so guys why we are doing this because when we install hadoop at that time we will be needing to supply ip address of your master and slave so instead of supplying the ip address we are going to supply alias that we are creating now so guys this is the best practice that you should not specify the uh, directly the ip address because there are chances that your ip address may change for the same we have created alias like master slave one slave two and all now when whenever in the configuration file we need to specify the ip instead of ip of master we will specify just master it will automatically read the ip address from host file firstly secondly there should be a question that why i am using private ip now guys this is for the internal communication between hadoop this is for the internal communication between hadoop it means say for example if uh, your master is communicating to slave he will communicate via this internal ip it would be very easy best practice and always recommended to always connect uh, communicate via internal ip because it will be connected via lan it will uh, contact uh, master co will contact slaves via lan otherwise if we supply pr public ip all the communication will happen via wan 
your data will be traveling via van that that's not recommended that's why we are using private ip here in the host file okay let's save this so guys for uh, editing of a file i am using nano you can use pico you can use vi any of the editor what you want this is one of the simplest editor okay i have added the entry of the master and slave now guys in the place of master ip slave ip slave to ip put the value of corresponding ip we have done that okay now step number five configure ssh we need to install open ssh server and open ssh client okay it's already installed it's already th to the newest version to uh, in the most of the versions in the most of the linux flavor it is already installed now we are generating key pairs ssh keygen minus t rsa minus capital p double quotes it is going to generate public and private key it is going to generate a key pair that we are going to use for ssh setup passwordless ssh setup press enter it is asking for the file name press enter don't supply any file name it will go in automatically default file enter now if i show you the content ls dot ssh these two files has been created id underscore rsa and id underscore rsa dot pub the first file that is id underscore rsa is your private key id underscore rsa dot pub is the public key okay let's go to next step now configure passwordless ssh that is copy the content of your public key id underscore rsa dot pub of master to authorized keys file of all these slaves okay what we need to do we need to copy this content that is let's get dot ssh id underscore rsa dot pub we need to copy this content from master and paste it on all these slaves where nano dot ssh authorized keys file okay we have opened this file save it control x y paste okay before that okay guys let me show you since we have already set up so th to the slave one now passwordless ssh to slave one is set up let me show you ssh slave one are you sure you want to continue yes we want to connect yes now look at this without giving any error without giving any pass asking any password we have logged in look at the host name both the host name are now same 254 254 let me go back if i ssh to slave 2 since i haven't set up password ssh it will give me an error let me show you yes connect it is giving permission denied public key it is giving permission denied public key what we need to do here we need to copy the content of id underscore rsa dot pub this file to slave to as well okay nano dot ssh id underscore rsa oh sorry uh, to authorize keys file okay save it here control x y enter will save the file now if i again ssh to slave 2 look at this ssh slave 2 i have uh, i have logged into slave 2 remotely 175 133 both are same so guys passwordless ssh from master to slave one from master to slave two has been set up 
this passwordless SSH is required for remote script invocation. That I'll show you when I start the services of Hadoop from here. Automatically, all the services will start here as well as here. That is for on all the sleeves. Let's go to our manual once again and let's see the next step. 5.3 we have done 5.4 step we have already checked the SSH to slaves now next thing download Hadoop let's copy this URL okay now guys whatever things we are doing we are uh, doing all the things on the master so usually to install Hadoop we uh, create another directory in the slash um, uh, like slash data one like those settings those location or slash opd but since this is uh, initial learning phase uh, we can install hadoop in your home directory as well so let's download hadoop to download hadoop you can use wget command wget and complete path complete url enter it is going to download hadoop okay it has downloaded hadoop now guys you can see the speed 75 mbps in the cloud we usually get very very fast speed Apart from that, if you are planning, whenever you deploy a cluster, if you are planning to upload the data from your local machine to cloud, that is very slow. So this uh, uploading of the 72 MB, 74, uh, 75 MB data will approximately take one hour where it has taken 0.9 second now to download from that. So it is recommended always download from directly from internet okay now download has done let's go to step number six to install Hadoop tar xf Hadoop installation okay tar xf we are going to untar Hadoop Hadoop it will untar Hadoop setup okay let's ls and see the yeah a directory has been created a directory has been created Hadoop 0.20.2-cdh3u6 what next go to hadoop home directory so guys this particular directory that is your hadoop setup directory is called hadoop home directory always you should run all your commands from hadoop home directory now setup configuration step number 7.1 Edit configuration file conf slash hadoop env dot sh and set java home. Firstly, let's see where, where java is installed. Usually it is installed in ls slash user lib jvm. Okay, yeah, java is installed here. So this is the path of java. Let's copy the path of java. And we need to edit file conf slash hadoop env.sh. Yes. We'll set the Java home here. Make sure you remove this hash. That is comment. You uncomment it and remove the old path and paste your new path. Save it. Okay. First step is done. That is, we have edited the configuration file Hadoop env.sh. So, guys, Hadoop env.sh, as the name is suggesting, it is an environment file will be where we set environment variables, where we set environment variable Hadoop env.sh Hadoop environment file. Now, 7.2, edit configuration file core conf slash core side dot xml guys core site .xml is very important file of Hadoop it is Hadoop's configuration file again available in the conf directory of Hadoop so if I ls it here this is the conf directory of Hadoop yeah so this core site .xml file uh, here we specify uh, systems core parameter like the location of your name node like if you want to enable your trash if you want to specify any comparison if you want to there are lots of parameters there are around uh, 40 50 parameters are available for code side.xml file which we can edit and specify here in this file 
but uh, the they are these two are the mandatory parameters let me first copy and then i'll show you and then i'll explain you nano conf slash core side dot xml yes so guys here individual property specify a individual parameter so what parameter we have currently set up its name and its value the first parameter is fs dot default dot name fs dot default dot name specifies the location of your name node the location of the name node that is hdfs colon double slash master now guys we are not specifying here ip address instead of that we are specifying a master it will pick up the ip address from host file colon 9000 port number so on this location name node will be running now second proper property that is my second parameter hadoop dot temp dot dir here we should specify the location where user can user should have the right privileges so let me specify the correct location i am giving the location of my home directory only because in the home always everybody is having their complete privileges so i am giving the path of slash home slash ubuntu slash edge data so inside this edge data directory all your data will be stored now inside hadoop dot temp dot dir all hadoop's temporary as well as permanent data is getting stored all of its temporary as well as permanent data is getting stored at this location okay let's save this yes go back to the manual what next edit configuration file conf slash hdfs site dot xml as the name is specifying guys hdfs site dot xml is a file where we specify file system related parameter where we specify file system related parameter that is hdfs related parameter we specify here let me copy the specific parameter okay nano conf slash hdfs site dot xml paste it here now so guys we are setting a parameter dfs dot replication it means how many replication replica of a block needs to be created we are setting the value 2 as we are having two host we can't increase more than two let's save this okay next configuration file conf slash map right site dot xml map right site dot xml so guys as the name suggesting in this file we are going to set map reduce related parameter this is the most important file in the hadoop because we know that uh, map reduce is the heart of a loop so in this file we have around 90 parameters which we can set but there is one mandatory parameter that we are seeing here so all those uh, 90 parameter you can find in uh, your map rate default dot xml let me copy it okay so we are setting a parameter map rate dot job dot tracker that is the location of your job tracker on which ip and port job tracker will be running we are specifying this information here master again it will take the ip from your host file colon port number let's save this y enter okay what next 7.5 edit configuration file conf slash master add an entry of secondary master now guys it is important point in the conf slash master in the masters file we do not specify the entry of master 
instead of that we specify the entry of secondary master here we specify the entry of secondary master I, I recommend you can you should note down this so nano conf slash master here remove the old entry and specify the place where you should want to run secondary master so guys usually secondary master is run on a third machine that is uh, apart from your master or slave the configuration of secondary master should be same as master but uh, alternatively if you are having a small cluster you can make any of your slave as a secondary master okay save it no 7.6 edit configuration file conf slash slaves and add entry of slaves so in the slaves file guys we are going to specify the entry of all these slaves remove old entry slave 0 1 slave 0 2 yes save it yes save it as it is edit configure so guys we have done all our configurations let's go to the step number 7.7 set environment variable update dot bash rc file and set your hadoop home and path variable we need to set up this these two paths let me copy it So what we need to do nano dot bash rc go at the end and specify these two paths so let me update the path my correct path is guys make sure whenever you specify any path you should specify your systems path hadoop home my path is slash home slash ubuntu slash hadoop dash 0.20.2-cdscu6 yes this is my path let's save it after that you should run a bash command so that all your variables will be in action let's go back to manual hadoop setup is done on master hadoop setup is done on master all configuration is done now what next step number eight set up hadoop on slave what it is asking repeat the step 3 and 4 on all these slaves step 3 that is install java and add entry of master and slave in the host file we need to repeat this these two steps on all these slaves okay let's go to these two steps that is first is the installation of java let's copy this command okay let's open both the slaves parallelly and we'll uh, run these two commands parallelly sudo app get update update the source list meanwhile it is updating the source list let me copy the next command okay source list updated now we are installing the python software properties in both the machines yes it is installing the same okay let's copy the next command where we are adding another repository yes repository has been added now we need to again update our source list we need to run sudo apt get update sudo app get update yes our source list has been updated what next directly install java now guys this uh, particular step i am taking a little fast because we have already the, done the same thing on the master run the, this command sudo app get install oracle dash java 7 dash installer yes install it
Yes, do you want to continue? Yes. Yes, accept the software license terms. Now it is installing the Java, it is downloading all the packages. Okay, Java installation is done. Let's check. Java minus version. Yes, Java is installed and uh, 1.7.0.65 dot underscore 65 version is there. Here again the same. Perfect. Step number three is done. Next step number four. We need to add these entries in the host file. We have already have uh, have these entries in the notepad file let's copy it on both these slaves sudo your nano or vi slash host slash etc slash host uh, I have put it on the wrong position let's put it at the initial position okay save it perform the same thing here sudo nano slash etc slash host yes save it okay so guys on the slave number one and slave two we have done all the no, both these steps which was listed in step number eight let's go to step number eight okay so step 8.1 is done that is we have installed java we have added the entry of master and slave what next create tarball of configured hadoop setup and copy to all these slaves what i'm doing here guys we have installed hadoop properly we have done we have edited this file, core side, HDFS side, map rate side, masters, slaves and all. Now, rather than doing all this uh, configuration again and again on all these slaves, let's create a tarball of whatever we have configured. That is star space CZF space Hadoop dot tar dot GZ of Hadoop directory whatever we have done we have created another tarball uh, uh, compressed uh, tarball uh, uh, compressed file like which we are going to send we are which we are going to copy to all these slaves now a file is there yes a file is there hadoop.tar.gz now what we need to do is scp hadoop.tar.gz yes where you want to send it on the slave 1 on the slave 1 at this path ok it is done let's check it yes, yes it has copied let's check on slave 2 nothing is there Okay, send it on this slave to as well. Okay, done. Now we have copied this setup on both these slaves. Let's go back to the manual. What next? Now, untar configured Hadoop setup on these slaves. That is star space xf. Okay, let's run tar xf Hadoop. Let's do the same thing here tar xzf hadoop yes so if we check yeah there is a hadoop home directory created here we have got the same directory let's check let's go inside the directory and check whether all the configurations are there or not conf slash core side dot xml yes we have all the configurations are there as it is 
perfect what next step number nine start the cluster our complete configuration of the cluster is done now we are ready to start the cluster we are ready to start the cluster but before starting we need to format the name node now guys this activity should be done once when you install Hadoop else it will delete all your data from HDFS it is recommended that you should not format your name node again just once you should format the name node make sure you run this name node format command on your master that is Hadoop name node minus format it is formatting the name node make sure you get the successful message name node has been successfully formatted make sure you get this particular successful message okay name node is formatted what next now start Hadoop services so guys here firstly we should start HDFS services that is bin slash start HDF start DFS dot SH let's go inside Hadoop home directory bin slash start dfs dot sh as the hdfs services are the base services that is for the storage we should always start hdfs services first now guys when i started the hdfs services when i run the gps command to check what services are running my name node is running here it means all these things are correct on the slave one data node is there it means we have set up this data node in the slaves file that is correct apart from that secondary name node is also running here because we have set up slave one entry in masters file as well but in the slave two just one daemon will be running that is data node okay let's start the next services firstly let me show you here start map reduce services that is bin slash start map rate dot sh yes it is starting map reduce services okay let's run jps so guys jps is a command that gives you list of all the java processes we have got job tracker and name node both are running name node is the master of hdfs job tracker is the master of map reduce on the slave one task tracker that is the slave of map reduce data node slave of hdfs are running additional responsibility secondary name node slave two jps data node task tracker both the slave demons are running so guys it means our Hadoop is set up it is running up and fine it is also asking to check the demons by GPS now the tenth step if you want you can stop your cluster our Hadoop cluster is set up we can use it for our all the usage all our data processing we can check all the Hadoop demons, all the Hadoop uh, console on the web as well. You can use your master's public IP. Call in 50070, which will open your Hadoop administration name node console cluster summary. Live nodes, two live nodes are there, two slaves are there. No dead nodes. Your cluster's configure, configured capacity, DFS non dfs everything all the details are here okay what next let's run a map reduce job let's firstly copy some data hadoop dfs minus mkdir input hadoop dfs minus what let's copy all the files of the conf directory in the INP we can check it here but we need to supply the IP address of slave slave 1 
because it is going to take the entry of slave yes in the users slash ubuntu slash inp all the configuration file like our core site hadoop env hdfs site all these files has been copied now what next let's run a map reduce job hadoop jar hadoop example let's run a word count example my input location is INP output location let's make it out okay map reduce job has been submitted we'll check this status on the console as well the port for the job tracker is 50030 yes there is one running job you can refresh the status here you can check it here as well map 11 percent 23 percent 29 percent map is getting complete we can refresh the status here as well yes 47 percent yes 100% map has been completed that is all your 17 maps 17 completed your one reducer is running and if I refresh I think it will also be completed yeah your map reduce job has been now in the completed job list you can check the output here as well out yeah this underscore success file indicates that your map reduce job was successful so we can open it it will give you the your output final output file so it is give listing you all the words and their counts how many time each and every word is there default 13 times each one time and so on the complete list is here Now guys, whenever you have done, make sure you firstly stop the MapReduce service, then HDFS service. Okay, so guys, that's it for Hadoop cluster setup. That is, we have deployed a real cluster on the Amazon Web Services, AWS. And uh, we have uh, uh, configured, we have used three nodes and we have installed Hadoop distributedly that is a pure distributed mode so guys uh, let me show you one more thing uh, when you if you, when you are done you are, all the work are done you can stop all your instances because these instances are going to cost you you can select all instances you can click on the action and you can either stop them if you stop these instances it will stop you you are going to get your all the data and everything will be available but if you terminate your instance, it is going to lo uh, delete all your data. It is going to terminate your instance completely. But if you stop, it is going to charge you for the storage. If you terminate, it is not going to charge you for anything. So if I terminate it, whatever things I have done till now, I'm going to lose. But uh, since I, I, I don't want to uh, take it uh, uh, open, make it open, make it up and running, we can terminate as soon as our work is done, we can terminate it. So in the if you ask me for the production, real production cluster, their Hadoop clusters are continuously running. It's not like um, that they stop it again and again and start it. They, are, uh, they usually make it running for quite long time until their all the works are done but uh, here what we are uh, saying uh, since it's for our learning and r&d purpose 
for our uh, learning we should as soon as our work is done we can terminate the instances as soon as you click terminate it will shut down and it will terminate all the instances so guys that's it for hadoop cluster setup thanks so much for attending